As far as the hydraulic system goes on the machine, I have it all pretty much worked out on paper. Um, but uh, now that I've designed it, I've run into a bit of a snag. Well, it's a pretty major snag, actually. Um, and that's the hydraulic reservoir size compared to the size of this vehicle. So a rule of thumb for a hydraulic reservoir size is it should be three to five times your pump flow. And with the system I've designed, I'm looking at about 10 gallons per minute in pump flow. So that would give me about 30 to 50 gallons of hydraulic reservoir size. And to give you an idea of what exactly that means is, this is a five gallon pail. That's 10 gallons. And I'm, in theory, supposed to have three to five times that amount for the pump flow that I'm running. And the reason I have such high flows is because I'm running a low pressure, high flow system. So I'm hoping that because it's low pressure, I aim to be in the 1500 to 1600 PSI range, that it may not generate as much heat as a higher pressure system. And I might be able to get away with a lower uh, hydraulic reservoir size. So my goal is to somehow get a 15 gallon hydraulic reservoir onto this vehicle. So that's one and a half times pump flow, which is extremely low. Um, and what this will do is, if it becomes a problem, is that my fluid is going to heat up really fast. Um, probably won't be a big problem if I'm driving in the winter, but on a hot summer day it may. And I may have to incorporate some kind of an oil cooler system. Now, this is already a lot of fluid to fit into my frame. And basically what, uh, what's going on here is, everything I've done to this motor mount is no good because I need this room in the frame. I'm going to have to move this motor as far forward as possible. That's about as good as it gets. I got it up on some blocks here. Way forward. So it's giving me this area back here. I mean, yeah, okay, there's five gallons. I could do another. in there. Something up into the seat like that. I guess it's possible. I'm going to incorporate this area. That's probably five gallons. So, you know, if I expand a tank up into this zone here, I think I'll get there. I'll just make it as big as possible, I guess. I guess I'll start cutting out some templates and go from there. I'm thinking about the tank and I don't need any of this stuff. I'm going to make the tank part of the frame and that way I can bring it up here make it a little bit higher and then have it actually pull to the top part of the frame and that's what's going to hold the tank in and be the top frame uh, structure. It's going to save me a little bit of weight and I'll remount the shock to this back area. started making the tank by just building a template and then plasma cutting the sides out of that. Um, the whole tank is made out of eighth inch plate steel and I just bent everything by hand using the workbench and clamps and pieces of wood and anything I could come across really. Uh, once I got it kind of fitting uh, I used some rod to keep everything separated and then just kind of worked my way along with different clamps and uh, whatever I could do to get the job done I kind of used a couple straps in there too and uh, just kept bending it by hand and tack welding it along on the inside. And then after I had it all formed up, um, you can see I left about a quarter inch uh, overlap all the way to the outside here. And that's where I'm going to actually weld the tank to seal it. And I'll have to fill it all up with water and to make sure that it doesn't leak. These inside welds are just for the purpose of bending it and getting it all together. You can see these rods that I use to kind of maintain distance. Um, they can be pulled right out. Then I um, welded some bungs into the frame where I had cut it. And I'm secured the tank now to the frame with these brackets. On the back and the front. And those will be strengthened right across eventually once I finish welding the rest of the different fittings into the tank I need. So the top of the tank actually becomes part of the frame. 
Yeah, and I was also able to get the engine remounted in the forward position. Um, made a new mount out of the same plate that I made the tank out of. And it's sitting pretty nice there. Nice and tight in the front. And I think I'll have ample room to hook up the hoses and everything else I'm going to need to do with this. But uh, there's so many other things to do yet. I mean, I still have to build the exhaust system. I need to uh, intake snorkel, all the controls routing hydraulic hoses, uh, figure out well I'm going to weld all the bungs into the tank, but I do have a little bit of progress here. Kind of see the machine taking shape anyways. I think getting this tank in the right spot and having the engine where it should be, even though it's kind of one step backward, um, in the end it's going to be the right decision. Anyways, I'll keep you posted if I get anything more done.